All right, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and we are back with another Raid Shadow Legends free to play mystery shard only guide. So, today we're going to be talking about the Dragon's Lair. Now, this is not a hard dungeon. To be honest, it doesn't even really need a guide, so to speak. If you're building the starting five that we talked about, and you've been building your heroes and making them strong, then honestly, this is not going to be a tough dungeon for anyone um so this will be a little bit shorter than my other dungeon guides there's really not much to talk about the only reason this video will take a little long is because some of the fights take long so let's just go into it you'll see what we're talking about we don't want champions we want dungeons all right so we're gonna go to dungeons and we're gonna look at this dragon i can't remember a time that i really had trouble with this bet with this boss like he's never really i've never really struggled as long as i was fighting him on equal footing with like the with like the heroes that are basically the same level you know ish so don't expect this guy to be hard he's a great place to farm for early early game pieces he's actually great to farm even for late game pieces you can get accuracy speed life steal destroy really that's about it the other stuff is good but not like it's more like situational is really what it is i have one hero in toxic i think i have like one hero in fruit and frost the other three I don't really use unless you need someone who, you know, doesn't take as much AOE damage. So there you go. And I do use some accuracy stuff. So let's just go into this real quick and we'll show you what we do and how we beat this. So literally 90% of this dungeon is going to be what you see here. <laughs> it's literally that's it. Like you can come in here with the starting five and go to town. That's it. Like I wish I could say there was more to it than that. There's going to be a couple of hiccups in here where you'll have ads in like the waves that can do counterattack or block damage or unkill. Like that's about it. Like there's really nothing special about this fight other than the fact that he puts up a shield that you're going to want to break down as quickly as possible or he stuns everybody and likes to throw a bunch of debuffs on you. And that's really it. So you can go through. Honestly, I went through stage, I'm going to show some of the dungeons just so you can see, but I went through stage one through, I think, 18, honestly, with the same team. There's really no magic here. So we're going to skip ahead because five, obviously, look, 16 seconds, there's this, there's no reason. As you can see, stage two, 36 seconds. Here, let's see if we can beat our best time. Let's try it. I mean, if I brought a bunch of uh, nukers in here, we probably would definitely beat our, our best time. Let's just see how it goes. Who gets first hit is really what it comes down to. If I just put Kale and somebody else in here, it'd be over in like 13 seconds. And that's it. It would be done. But yeah, this team will literally get you through the entirety of Dragon's Lair. There's really nothing here. Stage selection. All right, we'll go to stage 10 now. We'll move our way up a little bit further. Essentially, really why this team is so good is just because... They get it done. You know what I mean? They have all the skills they need to get through it. You have a shield. You have the extra shield on Valerie and on Spirit Host. You have the speed up with Diabolist, defense down with War Maiden, and then you've got your Nuker and Kale, and he can poison the boss. Now there are other teams you can use here. Um, there's plenty of teams. Like you can build, you can bring in a ton of DPS heroes. You can bring in a ton of deep. Uh, defensive heroes, whatever you want to do, honestly. There's no magic in this dungeon. There's nothing crazy about it. The reason it works, though, and the reason why a lot of people would die is, one, because you don't have someone who can remove debuffs, possibly, and you don't have somebody who can protect your team. That's really the only reason you would have trouble in the Dragon's End, because he'll use that shield. If you can break the shield down with a ton of DPS then you don't really need the debuff removal because you can get through most of it. Debuff removal is useful, though. He does have a couple of other things he throws out. He throws out some nasty poisons, things like that, but nothing special. Stage selection. So now we're going to go to 15. Let me see. Let's look at some time. So, yeah, you're basically in the one-minute range on all of these for me right now. So now we're going to go to 15. This is really, I think, is it 15? Let me just see. Is it 14? All right, so 14 is really your goal, right? Yeah, well, no, actually not 14. 13 is really your goal to get to because that's when you can start getting six-star gear. So just build the starting five and keep playing the game until you can beat 
stage 13. Then you can farm this for six star gear. It's not the best drop rates as the higher levels, but you can at least start getting some six star gear. And this is where I actually would farm for tournaments and stuff. So that's why I have a good time here um, as far as the other fights. But yeah, you can literally just farm 13 and you can get all your life steal and all your speed gear for your heroes. And there you go, problem solved. But we're going to go to 15 just so you can see a negative affinity because the only one here who's strong affinity here is Spirit Host. So let's go into 15. You're going to see, it's like, I think you're going to basically progress through this dungeon basically as fast as you can level your heroes. That's it. Every time you get a new hero's master is done, every time you get another hero to level 60 or 50 or whatever it is that you're on, whatever stage, you know, whatever area of the game you're on, just push forward. That's it. There's really, I, I wish I could say this dungeon even needed a guide, but I feel like I had the other guides up. I might as well at least throw something in here so people can understand that when I show you the starting five, that I'm not just showing you the starting five because they're kind of good. I'm showing them because they, they beat dungeons. And this is a perfect example of where the, the starting five will do a really good job without even changing things, just getting them into better gear and getting Kale stronger, getting War Maiden a little stronger, getting everyone else faster and a little more defensive on Spirit Host and Valerie. And there you go. Boom. You've got a, a winning dragon team. Now, up until about 15, I think. Well, I'm going to say up until about 15 with my current team, not with your current team. With your current team, you're going to see that shield a lot more, obviously, because you're going to have level 40s, level 30s in here. You know, depending on what level of the dragon you're at, you're going to be seeing that shield more and more. But the good news is, is that even if it hits you, it's not the end of the world. Like, you're not going to die unless you just didn't build your heroes right, honestly, because these guys have all the skills they need to keep you alive. Now, I did beat this with Apothecary instead of Diabolus because I pulled him early. But Diabolus is a good changeover. You can use her. The shield is pretty good from Valerie and from Spirit Host to get you through the first few um, like stages. So that way you can actually survive. So Diabolus, the only thing I could say, and this is what I've said in most videos, is that the only thing that could change is maybe put Diabolus in some kind of regen set so that she can heal. Um, Lifesteal could work, but on this fight, probably not because you're not AoEing the dragon, and that's not going to really get your HP back. So honestly, regen would probably be your best bet, and then just get her HP as high as you can. With But speed is still her number one priority on stats. You don't want to go anywhere else. All right, now let's keep going. Now, we use this team, I believe, until 18. This is where I think we still won. And once again, I did have Apothecary in this situation, but right now we're going to do it with... Diabolus because I want one to see that she can do it and two I want you to see that she can do it because I honestly don't remember where Diabolus starts to fall off if at all I know I've put her in Dragon 20 but it was in a team with Syl so if you are at that point and you have Syl then yeah it doesn't really matter what you which one you pick in you could you could bring in Diabolus you can bring in High Katoon you can bring in whoever the hell you want to be honest as your speed lead doesn't really matter because the rest of the team is what is what's doing the work. They're, your speed person is literally just making sure everyone has more turns. That's it. Just get everyone else attacking more. That's why the speed is the only thing that matters on them. Now, if you have stun set on Diabolus, obviously it'll make these waves a little bit easier. You won't be getting stuck with block damages and all that other crap. So far, we've been killing it fast enough where it doesn't really matter. See what I mean about Diablos, though? She's getting a little bit down there with the spiciness. There you go. Kill them. But either way, she usually makes it through. I think the boss would be the only place that I would say she might start having a trouble if you actually are using the strategy where you don't really care about the shield, in which case she might get poisoned to death and then be dead. But the goal here is to kill, her, kill the dragon in shorter turns, so that way you don't have to worry about HP so much, and you'll have that big-ass shield there, see? To get you through the first few rounds. And the good news here is that. Kale has lifesteal. Spirit host has lifesteal. Valerie can heal herself. You've got the shields. War Maiden can get herself back up. From, a, from low HP. Because of her masteries. But I mean if they die it sucks. And it might cause you to lose. But Kale is usually pretty good. See that's the only thing that might mess with you. If. Spirit Host doesn't get off her 
remove debuffs. But luckily, Valerie has her lowering the debuffs skill, so she can like lower it for one turn, so you're not at least getting more turns with poison and all the other crap on you. But see, War Maiden can heal herself back up. See, this is where it gets dangerous without Apothecary. But luckily, like I said, she can do that. Hopefully, the shield goes back up, and if not, then so be it. They die. But like I said, I didn't really... I think this is the last fight that I used Apothecary and this specific team. After this, I started adding so that I could kind of counterattack the, the fact that you're going to have a hero that might die here and there. See, this is where it's going to get a little dangerous. It's right at the end. And when I first did this, I think on 19, we did die. That was until I... And that was why I started changing up my team. I mean, Syl basically is your dungeon breaker. She gets you through your stage 18 to 20 dungeons on almost all of them. So there you go. So this team can win. There's not much else to talk about here. So now, once we get into 19 and 20, stuff gets a little weird. We did beat 21. We're not going to really talk about that because we don't, we're not trying to push 21 right now. We're only going from stage 1 to 20. Now, once you get to 19, it really just depends on your build. If your team is built like mine they may still have an issue, all right? And that's only because he can kind of do a ton more damage and kill you fast. So what we did is this. Now, you can switch out Diabolus in this team, and that's what we're going to do. This is for 20 and 19. Boop, there we go. We're going to switch in Diabolus just so you can see that she does work. All right, now, we're, this is a good team. Still keeps everyone alive. She can resurrect anyone that gets killed. All right, we are on stage 19. Do we even need to do 19? Is it even necessary? I mean, it's the negative affinity, so let's just do it. Just so you can see that even with the negative affinity, it should be fine. Yeah, this fight was definitely a little sucked. And then you also have this guy who does block damage, which is where it gets a little little dicey. And it's not even that he blocks damage. It's that it's just freaking annoying that you have to wait your turn to get it back. You could bring someone like, uh, what the hell's her name, Arbiter in here. I mean, she's obviously a high-end hero, but you could bring somebody who has removed debuffs and possibly get it off, but I don't know if it's really worth it because I don't really know any heroes that remove debuffs that I'm using currently that I would switch in for someone else because the utility of everyone else is pretty good, so I really wouldn't want to switch anyone out. But this fight takes a little bit longer, but since Syl is so defensive, most likely she's not going to die, and she'll be able to resurrect anyone who gets one shot by the dragon. It doesn't happen very often, but who knows? This Today could be our lucky day. We may win the lottery on the dragon's lair and get my ass handed to me by this boy, Dragon Man. What is the What is the dragon's name, anyway? I should probably look at the boss guide and see what the dragon's actual name is. It's, it's like... You look at the name and you're like, oh, the dragon slayer, that's that's dark and scary. And then you see the name and the, and the boss's name is like Fred. It's Fred the dragon. I think I should make uh, a video game. I, that's what I think. I'm going to make a game and just name all the worst monsters in the game that are like disgusting, vile creatures and just name them like really like this. This one's Bert. This is this is uh, Bert the Minotaur. <laughs> I kind of love this dungeon because it's such an easy dungeon that you can just kind of relax, put it on auto farm and not really worry about it. And I've done all kinds of variations on this team in in Dragon. I've brought in Dark Alhane, I've brought in Dark Aethel, I've brought in that new Archmage guy to try him out. I've brought in, uh, well, it's stage 20 at least. I've brought in like Frozen Banshee, I've brought in Grave Chill. I literally have just switched people out. And it so far hasn't really affected my game because they're all reasonably good and reasonably built. So this is really just, this is essentially what I would call the beginner's dungeon. It's never super hard. It's enough challenge to basically test you and make you level your heroes more, get better gear, things like that. But the whole point of this dungeon, I think, is that you just want to do it to get your six-star gear so that you can beat other dungeons. So this is basically your gateway dungeon. That gets you everything you need. It gives you the life steal. It gives you the speed. Because those are the two main stats in the beginning of the game. Is really just life steal and speed. You just want to be able to not die. Keep your HP high. Because your healer might not be that good. And that's it. And then have your speed person be really fast. And even put like a secondary 
um, speed set on everybody. To be honest, you could literally put almost every hero in lifesteal and a, a speed set, and you'd be fine, to be honest. Like, that's, like, almost the perfect gear set for almost almost every hero there's definitely going to be some exceptions you know like sill you want in relentless more than likely but if she was in lifesteal and speed do i think that your whole game would be thrown off no which is honestly why most people farm dragon it's the most reliable sets outside of like special occasions like if you need uh what's that one that's really uh regen that's a really good one savage obviously like there's definitely some some good sets outside of dragon but this is your this is your chance to get everything you need to start your game which is why it's not hard there's really no there's no bs in this fight to be honest like it's just are your heroes strong enough it's basically a dps check and a defense check that's all this dungeon really is so if you're not able to beat it with these teams with this team then you just need to get stronger. That's really it. You just keep farming the stage that you're on, and then eventually you'll have the gear to beat the next stage. Now, this fight takes a little bit longer. Like I said, this is the wrong affinity, so it is the stronger version, so we're going to have a lot of weak hits. We're going to have a lot of uh, disco dancing. We're going to have a lot of fire breath in our face, but either way, they will get through it. I have faith in them. Sill is the hard carry here. Sill is basically, after six months, Sill gets you through most dungeons. I wish I could say there wasn't anything else there, but it's like, it's such a, she's such a magical hero for beating dungeons. It's really going to change everything. She's like the first, like, real reviver, is really what she is. And I don't mean like a reviver, like she's the only one that revives. I'm just mean she's the most consistent. She's fast as hell, because you want tons of speed and defense on her. She's a defensive hero, which means. By making her tanky and not able to die, you're actually making her stronger. Say that was the shield. It basically just bounces off us. Like a ball, it bounces. Quick poll. How many people had trouble with dragon? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't ever see any dragon tutorials, and I think this is why. Because it's just, it's just a boring dungeon. It's almost like... A, this is like... I would call this the sixth potion keep, or the fourth. No, there's the sixth. Sorry, there's five. It really is the sixth potion keep. It's just, it's like, all right, cool. So this is what we're doing now. <laughs> I mean, actually, magic keep is harder, to, to be honest, because you have to deal with the damn shield. And that boss does insane damage to your team, too. So you're going to need a lot to get through that dungeon. But there you go. That's the... That's Brimstone from Sill, which makes every fight super easy. And there you go. Say goodbye to Mr. Dragonhead. Dragonface dead. All right, so now for stage 20, you can use whoever you want. Um, and when I say you can use whoever you want, I mean you can use whoever you want within reason. Like, you're going to want somebody who can pop, who can remove debuffs. You're going to want somebody who can heal or shield or both. Valerie does both. Um, you don't need her at all, I don't think. Let's take her out. I don't think you really need her. I forgot who I replaced. Maybe I replaced... You know what? I actually replaced Spirit Host with other people. That's who it was. So we're just going to leave it the way it is, I think. We're just going to leave it like this because... I mean, that's literally what this, this whole fight is, is this. So now we're going to stage 20. The only difference here is that now you have your main attack heroes doing more damage is really what it is because they're not negative affinity. So this fight is actually easier than the one before it if you're using this team. I bet you never thought you'd see a guide, especially after all the craziness that goes into Spider, that goes into Fire Knight. Ice Golem is almost like this, but it's, I would say Ice Golem is like the second hardest fight out of the dungeons. I would say it goes Dragon, Ice Golem, Fire Knight, Spider. That's kind of that's kind of your gauge. So you're gonna it's gonna take you longer to beat Spider, but Fire Knight will not take you as long as Spider, and then the, so on, so on down. But 
Spirit Host can easily be removed because uh, Valerie can do shields, and she can lower the the uh, debuffs off your team. So it's slower, and you're going to take a little bit more damage. So if you have Apothecary or someone else like Apothecary who can heal, then that's good. You can also choose to not deal with healing as much and maybe only bring one healer and bring someone like, what's his name, like Archmage Helmet, someone who can do stuns and turn meter manipulation. You could bring someone like that to help with the waves if you're having trouble. That's really it. Like Once you get to this point, most of the problem in these fights is really the waves because they just do so much damage. So you're going to need crowd control to get through this fight. And But that's every single dungeon, so there's nothing special about Dragon that you really would have to worry about so much that I've seen 1 through 20. That may change from 21 to 20. Well, not even for 21. 21 was exactly the same from 22 to 25. That's really it. There's not much to this fight. You can just get stronger, go get a sandwich, and eat it while you play this game. That's basically all you have to do. This dungeon is a waiting game. How long does it take to get your hero to six star? Is really all this is. Did you get your masteries on your kale and get them to six star right when you started the game? If so, you already cleared up to like 15 probably. I'll say 14. I think at 15, you're going to start seeing some, uh, some incoming damage that you may not like. But yeah, this team can win literally from the first day that you start playing. If you get any one of these heroes. I mean, Kale will win by himself if you follow my guides, because you would try to get Kale up to 40 and 50, like, almost immediately in the first week. So that's a great way to just clear Dragon super easy up to, like, stage 10. Which is all you really need right in the beginning of the game. That's it. You don't even need much. Kale can wipe the boss out by himself. I think that's what we're going to do, just to add a little bit of drama to this fight, since, since there's not much going on. We're going we're gonna to test the limits of this team. We're going to play a game called How Many Times Can I Smack a Dragon in the Face with One Hero? All right. So, finally, we're at the boss. This is, like I said, these are longer fights. They do take a little bit longer with this team because they are a balanced team. They're not meant to speed farm it. They're just meant to win and always win, essentially. That's what they're here for. So, I wouldn't, I'm not going to break any records with this team. I'm sure if you have a crazy legendary like, I don't know, anyone, Mashal, someone like that, yeah, you're going to be able to kill this thing faster. Probably break the shield so you won't get stunned every time, say, like that. Luckily, we have removed debuffs. So, so yeah, we don't have to worry about stun as much. Whoever has it up when, she, when he does that attack is good. Hopefully, it's still. And he, that's the best part about still, too, is that even if she's stunned, it doesn't freaking matter because she's still going to heal your team. Does anyone understand me that Syl is the best hero? I don't know if she's the best hero. I mean, she's close. Is she the best hero that I own? Yes, probably. Is she my favorite hero? Not even close. I have weird favorites. If I was talking progression, I would I would 100% pick Sill over every hero on my account. Like if they were like, hey, you can only keep one of your heroes from your account and then start over, it would be Sill. Like, no questions asked, done. So, is she the best? Yes. Is she my favorite? No. I would honestly, like, if I go by favorites, Spirit Host is one of my favorites. Uh, Frozen Banshee, Grave Chill, they're, my, they're some of my favorites. Soul Bond is definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, I got a lot. And to be honest, you can switch out most of those heroes in this fight for Spirit Host if you want. If you want more damage, just bring in like Soul Bond or freaking either of the sisters from Frozen Banshee to Grave Chill. They're all good. If you have a DPS that can DPS, there you go. No problem, no dragon. And you'll know if you're doing poorly in this because you'll beat everything, get to the dragon, he'll do that. And maybe put up his shield and then wipe your whole team out on the last hit. So it's unfortunate that doing it this way, the only way you're going to know if you're strong enough is by getting to the last shield. And if he one-shots you, then it's over. So be it. Build, and you just stop playing it and build again. Build anew. 
Yeah, you can decrease attack all you want. I will still hit you with a 5,000 point kale bullet to the face. You know, I wonder if Valerie gets, if her if her ass gets cold. She's, she's wearing no pants. She's like, oh, I have these awesome leg armor, but I don't have any pants on. I'll take stupid armors for 500. There you go. What do we get? Anything good? We got attack. Too bad there's no speed on the damn thing, though. I mean, it's good enough. I actually need lifesteal, so that's good. So there's stage 20. All right, let's look and see. If you follow my guides and you're being a good person, let's see what happens. Let's go into here. This is red, which is the wrong affinity. Let's see what happens. I'm curious to see how much he can do. We're just going to do a test and work our way up. See, I don't know. My, see, my Kale isn't really built for a, a ton of defense, but he definitely can heal himself. It really just depends on whether or not he can heal himself more than the poisons do. I know he can do 10. Like, I'm not like, oh my god, he's not going to be 10. Like, he's definitely going to be 10. But after 10, I don't know. I don't know where his limit is. What we'll do is we'll go to the affinity that he's strong against and see how he does. All right. So he could beat 10 by himself. All right. So he's blue, right? So he is good against what? Green, was it? All right. So this is stage 15. Yeah, he's good against green. Let's see how he does. I don't think he's going to win this, but that's just my thing. I think he's going to be dead in three seconds, to be honest. I feel like you would have to build him more attack. Like, I would have to put the attack chest on him for this to win. And even then, he'll probably get his ass handed to him. Yeah, he ain't beating this. This is why I said we'll go, far, we'll go farther ahead and see. But you saw that he can at least do stage 10. Let's see. What's the next one down? 15. He did 10. 11's his affinity. Let's see if he can do 12. How far can my Kale go? This is the bonus round. See, as long as he can kill somebody and not get stunned, it shouldn't be an issue. Did they just kill themselves? Good job. I mean, not like stage 12 and 10 are really hard. I'm just, this is just uh, so you can kind of see that early game, you shouldn't be having trouble with a five person team. Like, I don't think I would do this with any other boss, to be honest. So there you go. Stage 12 is a winner. All right, so 15 is a no. 12 is a yes. This one is still the right affinity. This is negative, so he might die there. So this might, I feel like this is about as far as Kale can go. This is the can Kale do it? Is he the choo-choo that does not that does, that can. There's no the choo-choo that does. That's a, that's stupid. So this is going to come down to whether or not he actually gets an attack, I think. All right. Don't kill him. Oh, he used his AoE. That was the worst thing that could have happened. If he had his AoE here, he might have he done it. All right, he got a counterattack, which is good. Oh, this is so exciting. He's going to get his ass handed to him. Oh, that was it. Done. All right, so 12 is his limit right now. Mine's not very defensive. I have the I have a defense chest on him, but it's not the percentage. And it should be a percentage because that gives you tons more defense at his level. So if you have a defense percent chest, you might be able to win that. The other thing is his speed's really low. So if you got his speed up, he could easily beat these dungeons by himself. Because look at this. Look at this crap. Check, check out this crap right here. This crap speed on my Kale. Look, he's 180. If he was over 200, that would be an easy win. He would beat it. So don't go by my Kale. My Kale sucks ass, and I don't appreciate people talking smack about him. I know he's bad. I know I didn't build him amazingly. But you know what? He's my first hero, all right? Have a little respect. All right, so there we go.
Kale is the master of stage 12 in Dragon. So that's Dragon Dungeon. That's why I said there's really not much to, to explain here other than building the starting five. So if you want to know how we got here, you can go on my channel, which you are already on since you're watching this video, and you can go watch the starting five team for all new players. And that will give you the builds and things you need to make the team that we just used to get you through the Dragon Dungeon. All right? And that's really it. Nothing special here. You can, you can go on with your life and make some s'mores, drink some hot cocoa, and revel in the fact that you are now a Dragon Master and you only use basically farmable heroes except for Syl, unless you really went crazy and built your heroes up to 50 or 60,000 power. And in which case, you don't need Sill. And that's really it. If you have a team that has speed of 2 to 250 and crazy attack, well, then you don't even need Sill. You can just use the starting five, and you'll win anyway. So there you go. This is Dragon's Lair. This is Kale. This is Mobile Gamer Nerd. You guys have a great weekend. Take care.